to share. We're going to open our Bibles in Genesis chapter 48. I'm going to read with you some verses. But just for the sake of today, I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 7. But before, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives and this amazing love that never fails. Uh, everything else in this life fails, but not your love. Your love never fails. And we pray that you continue to remind us about your love. We, as sinners, we tend to forget about your love. And we praise you, Father, for your word and for the blessing of having the opportunity to share your word, to open your word, and to read it with freedom. And I thank you, Father, that you speak to us through your word. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are in a moment of testing going through difficulty and suffering, and I pray, Lord, that you be with them. Uh, thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 41 is starting in verse 1 up to verse 7. 41? Yeah, Genesis 41. No, no, eight, sorry, 48, starting in verse 1 to verse 7. Yeah. It's my ADHD that doesn't know that. <laughs> my mind is just... Genesis 48, from verse 1 to verse 7. You know, growing up, I've never heard about ADHD. This is such something, something new. It's just... I don't know. I don't know. It's just... It's just... After... Yeah, and... Like, growing up, I'm not going to say this because I'm recording. <laughs> but I'll tell you after. Genesis 48 from verse 1 to verse 7. After this, Joseph was told, Behold, your father is ill. So he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and he was told to Jacob, Your son Joseph has come to you. Then Israel summoned his strength and set up in bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you and I will make of you a company of peoples and will give this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. And now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, as Reuben and Simeon are. And the children that you fathered after them shall be yours. They shall be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. As for me, when I came from Padan, to my sorrow Rachel died in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was still some distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Amen. So you can see here, uh, Genesis 48 is it's showing us the last moments of Jacob. Uh, we are almost at the end of the book of Genesis. And so it's it, it will sound to us like a conclusion for this whole story about Joseph. And actually, as I said since from the beginning, the Bible is not worried about telling us uh, everything about how the universe came to be, came to existence. It, it, that's not the main focus. Because the Bible is just one chapter about the creation. Uh, if you add the fall, then you have chapter 1 and chapter 2. But the Bible spends 
14 chapters just talking about this relationship between the brothers, the 12 brothers. And there is a reason for that. The reason is to explain how the division of the promised land happened. Why this tribe got this portion, why that tribe got that portion. So chapter 48 is an explanation why there is no tribe of Joseph. You don't see in the book of Exodus, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Numbers, a mention, uh, the name of the tribe of Joseph. You, you don't have that. But instead, what you have is two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. And you see an explanation why, let's say, Joseph got double inheritance. Why Joseph through his children, he got two portions. Manasseh got one, Ephraim got the other. So it's really about explaining why one was rejected, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, and why Judah will come up as the first one. It'll be interesting one day if you have the opportunity if you read throughout the book of Exodus and even Joshua and see how the tribe of Judah, they will get the prominence. Uh, for example, when the tribes, they were marching through the land, who was the tribe that was in the front? Judah. Judah was in the front, leading. So it's interesting how the book of Genesis is trying to explain all that by showing us the relationship, why Reuben lost the blessing of being the firstborn. But today, I think uh, Genesis 48 is more than just explaining this, the tribes, why they got this, uh, this land, and why. It's more than that. It's all about how to finish so if there is one thing that I would like us all to get from this passage today is how to end well. Uh, imagine you in a race, like any, any type of race, car racing, marathon, 100 meter dash, whatever race you, it comes to your mind. Uh, thinking about race, what is or when is the most important time or moment of the race? What would you say? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Or the end? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because somebody wins. <laughs> yeah, because the end is when, that's when you get the prize. So there's no point starting in first if you're going to end up the last. It's not a big of a deal if you start last, but in the middle, you move up, and then at the end, you get to be the third, the second, even the first, because the end, the end is important. The end is important. And this is what we see here, because if you remember the story of Jacob, it doesn't start well. Right? He doesn't start life well because his life is confusing. From the moment of his birth, he's, it's, it's like when he was getting out, coming out of the mother's womb, he was fighting with, with his brother. To who, and that, that was something that he was a portrait, a depiction or a description of his life, always trying to end well always trying to get the best place or the best spot, it's not a surprise that he was, his nickname was, you're a cheater. Mm -hmm. His fame was, Jacob is not a good person. He's not honest. He's a cheater. 
Well, the beginning of his life was not good. What happened to him? He had to flee to run away because he tricked his brother. Remember, Esau was the first one, firstborn. He was the oldest, and he had all the rights and privileges of being the firstborn. But then he tricked his brother, and he lost because Jacob was a cheater. Jacob was always looking for the best spot, the best price, the best place. But it didn't, it didn't lead to a good life. No, he ended up at his uncle's house with someone who, is, who was worse than him, who made him work double the time because of Rachel. And remember that Jacob was a smart, but Laban was a smart. His uncle was a smarter. And remember that Jacob loved Rachel. And his uncle said, you want to marry Rachel? Okay, work for me for free for seven years. And he worked for seven years. And after seven years, now I finally can, I can marry the woman whom I love. And then, no, you have to marry the oldest first, Leah. You want Rachel, you work for me seven years more. And, and, and so the middle was not good as well. By God's grace, he has his children, him. but even in the middle, although he was in the promised land, it was not good because the brothers were fighting and he lost his wife. And he thought he had lost his most loved son, Joseph. But beginning, middle, when you think about the end, they don't matter much. And that's what we see here. We are almost at the end of Jacob's life. And what we can get from this passage today is how to end well. How to finish a race well. Uh, what we can do as Christians to put us in a good position, in a good place in this race that we call life. Although Jacob started bad, in a bad position, we can see that now he's ending well. He's finishing well. How about you when you think about your life, the beginning of your life? How did it start? When you look at, when you look back, and what do you see? That you started like ahead of others or you started far behind? What did people tell you about you and how you started life? How about the middle? What do you tell yourself about your life? Yeah, it was an okay life. Whoa, I'm behind. I was behind. Hey. I was in a good position. And how about now? What do you see about your life? So regardless where you are in your life right now, I do believe that this passage is for all of us today because we all have something in common. We all want to finish well. And the finish line is all that matters. It's all that matters. Uh, interesting thing about here looking at, Joseph, uh, at Jacob's life, is verse 4. Look what he does here. Let me read, starting in verse 3. And Jacob said to Joseph, God, of Can God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a company of peoples and I will give this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. One thing that you need to do 
in order to finish well is to share your faith with your loved ones. Do so you want to finish well? Share your faith. And share your faith with your loved ones. Because this is what Jacob does. And this is something, it doesn't, it, it didn't come from him. He learned from his father. And it didn't start with Isaac. It came from Abraham. So what you see throughout the whole book of Genesis, it's God promising to Abraham and Abraham sharing this promise to Isaac and Isaac sharing this promise to Jacob and Jacob sharing this promise to his children. It doesn't matter if Jacob was a cheater. It doesn't, make a, it doesn't matter if Jacob was looked by others as someone who started life as a cheater. It doesn't matter now that Jacob struggled and people cheated him and he went through a lot of suffering. It doesn't matter. Because if you want to end well your life, if you want to finish well, remember one thing. The promises God made you and share those promises with the ones who you love. Verse 3 is full of a personal touch. Look what Jacob says to his son Joseph. And, ja and uh, Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty, look, appear to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me. When Jacob was sharing the promises God made to him, you have this personal touch. It's repeating all the time, jo Joseph. This promise God made, he made to me. This promise I'm sharing with you is the promise God made to me when he appeared to me. God promised me when he appeared to me, and he, God himself, said to me. Finishing well means allowing the promises that God made you impact your life, and not only your life, the life of the people you love. Share your faith. Share your faith. Share the promises God made you. Because I have to say that sometimes life is so tough and we go through such hardships and difficulties that we let the difficulties shape us and to become our identity. Yeah. The pain is so much that all we do is to share the struggles we had and go over and over and to allow these difficulties to tell people who we are. The abuse we go through, the bitterness we go through, the bad relationships we went through, the sufferings and the injustices, there's no denial about those difficulties and struggles. But if we want to finish well, that means that we have to allow the gospel tell us who we are. And to allow these promises to shape who we are. To allow the gospel to speak louder than the pains and sufferings we went through in this life. And we have to share not the pains, but also the gospel with the people whom we love. And that's what it means to finish well. Jacob had many reasons to tell, oh, remember my brother Esau? He was such a bad person and I had to flee your grandpa's house because of him. And it's all his fault. And blame him and blame him. Or Jacob could go on this 
guilt trip and say, oh, it was all my fault. Remember how we end up here? It's because I made such bad choices in life and I'll go through and then, and then. No. The promises made by God were louder, were stronger. And that's what Joseph is, Jacob is sharing with Joseph. The Lord who promised me, who appeared to me, the Lord who said to me. There's such a beautiful thing in chapter 48 because remember that when Jacob was struggling and thinking about should I move down, should I go down to Egypt or not, God himself appeared to him and said, you go, don't be afraid of going to Egypt. And Joseph himself will close your eyes. Don't worry. You will see your beloved son one last time before you die. And what we see here in verse 8 is when Israel saw Joseph's sons, we, we see the fulfillment of God's promise. And not only uh, Jacob was able to see Joseph last time, but Jacob was able to see his grandchildren. It was such a, 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 an amazing fulfillment of God's promise, Jacob was not only able to see his son, but he saw his grandchildren. And let's not forget that finishing well means experimenting God's grace. Because if it was, finishing well means now you're going to get what you deserve we would be in a big, big trouble. If finishing well means getting what I worked hard for, meaning what I deserve, I tell you that, oh, I'm afraid. But it's not about that. Maybe I have something in my mind, oh yeah, of course, I'm, I'm finishing well and I'm excited. And I'm anxious because I'm going to get a huge bonus at the end. But at the end, something, somebody has something on me that maybe I have a bad surprise. I'm not going to get a big bonus, but I'm going to get a big, big trouble. No. But because finishing well means the awesome grace of God, it means that we all going to get far way more than we what than we what we really deserve we are going to get we are going to be in a better better position better than what deserve more than what we deserve because it's going to be based on god's grace Maybe at the end, Jacob deserved to be punished because he was a cheater. But what you see is the amazing grace of God. Maybe it was enough. According to Jacob and Jacob's behavior, it was enough for him just to see Joseph and at that moment, die. You see your son? No, that. No. But because of God's grace, Jacob was able to experiment for something that is, was far better and far beyond his own expectations. He not only saw and lived and had the blessing of having moments with his son Joseph, but he saw his grandchildren. And that is only because of God's grace. Amen. Finishing well means trusting in the amazing grace of our Lord. Finishing well is not only experimenting this grace, but it's to continue to trust. You share the promises of God, you experiment his grace and you continue to hope 
in disgrace. Look what Jacob says here in verse 21. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you again to the land of your fathers. Jacob knew in his heart that Egypt was not a permanent house for them. It was not their permanent home. It was not their forever land. Amen. Israel, Jacob knew in his heart that they had to go back to the land that was promised by God to them. And his hope was on that promise. He continued to trust in that promise. Because sometimes, for, for some of us, the race is tough. And for some reason, we, at the end, give up. Do you go on internet sometimes? And do you watch YouTube? And sometimes you have these crazy moments in Olympics or competitions when the, the runners, they run all this race. And at the end, for some reason, they start slowing down because they want to celebrate. They want to, I, I don't know what goes through their mind. They just slow down. And the, and the second place, the third place, they just continue to run around. And they lose the last second because the last moment, they just slow down. For some of us. Life, there are moments when we just slow down. Maybe because we are just giving up, or maybe we are just tired, or maybe we just sidetrack for a moment. We think that, oh, it's a moment to celebrate. It's a moment to just focus on other things. And, and, and we slow down. But to continue to run, to finish well, means to continue to have hope and to hold God's restoration, God's final promise. Don't give up. Don't slow down. Continue to hold because God's promises are real. Remember, Jacob was in Egypt, and, and for, at, at that moment, Egypt was the only resource for survival. There was no other place to go because promised land was famine, the other way was famine. That way was famine. The only place to survive was Egypt because Egypt had, was the only place they had plenty of food. Amen. But Jacob said, this is your not permanent home. Your place is the land that was promised to you, to us by God. Put your hope in that promise. You will go back. God will take you back. Finishing well means to continue to hope, to continue to have faith in God's promises. Brothers and sisters, this life is tough for all of us. Regardless how we start this life, regardless how we are running this life, where we are in this race, we all have our struggles. And we are all running towards the finish line. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25, that life is a race. Interesting how the Bible talks about life and comparing life to a race. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain the prize. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wrath, but we an imperishable. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25, that we are running this race. And we want to finish well. So we have to continue to run. We have to continue to persevere in order to finish 
well. Because we are running towards an imperishable wreath. Do you want to finish well? Share your faith. Do you want to finish well? Do you want to finish well this race in front of you, in front of all of us? Remember the promises God made you and set your heart on those promises. Continue to have hope. Do not slow down. Don't let the difficulties in this life to speak louder, but let the promises of God to speak louder in your heart and speak about those premises. Share those promises with others. Brothers and sisters, you're running. You're running towards the finish line. But don't be afraid because in Christ, the Bible says, we are all winners in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives because your grace is amazing. There's nothing in this life that can be compared to the grace that awaits us in heaven, to the amazing things that you have reserved, that you have in store for us, this amazing prize, this amazing reward. Father, we continue to trust in your grace because we do know that it's your grace that allows us to run this race with joy. Sometimes, Lord, we struggle where we do not know. We do know that your grace is always with us. So allow us, Lord, to live a life that is shaped by this grace. Don't let the pain and the struggles of this life to bring bitterness to our hearts. But let the joy of the gospel to speak louder in our hearts. Father, sometimes we get tired, we lose faith, we lose strength. And we ask, Father, that you speak to us continually. And we ask that we continue to hope in you, in your promises and to continue to be joyful because you are good all the time and all the time you're good and there's nothing different nothing different than your goodness that is reserved for us thank you father we pray in jesus name amen, amen. amen. Father, the mouth speaks of what the heart is full. Let your grace fill our hearts so that from our lips we only have words of grace. Don't let complaining and whining and bitterness have control over us. But let the gospel and the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ 
fill our hearts in such a way that our lips and our mouth will be a reflection of that reality in our hearts. Father, help us to be joyful in the moments of trials and tribulation. Take care of those who are suffering and are in pain. Bring healing, Lord. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Is that okay? 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 Is that ok